Autumn 1996, and plum crops are ripening throughout the nation. One heavily laden tree has caught the attention of Bob Dylan, Van Morrison, Robert De Niro, and Leonardo DiCaprio. What happened that day has never previously been considered funny enough to broadcast until now. These are the plums have been on about all week. <laughs> oh, they are lovely looking plums, like. You know, we better be quick, guys, or the wasps will get them. Don't worry, I've been keeping my eye on them. <laughs> I first spotted the potential succulents last week on my way back from Mother World. Hold on a minute, what's Mother World? It's kind of like Whole Foods. It's just at the back of Comet. What's this Comet? It's a bit like curries. Oh, I know. It's next to B&Q. Hold on. What's B&Q? Oh, it's kind of like home base. Oh, I know. Next to Motor World. Anyway, Mr. De Niro, you give Van a hug up. We'll get these plums. Oh, yeah. Or... Put your foot up there. Yeah. Hey, gang, look at these shoes. They're beautiful. Oh, that's very kind of you. I picked them up from Red or Dead there. Now, hold on. What's Red or Dead? <laughs> no, it's kind of like Saxon for younger people. Oh, I know. It's next to pastimes. What the? Look, it's pastime. <laughs> I know. It's like, uh... No, I don't know. Anyway, what about these bones? Oh, no, they've turned. Here comes the bus. Uh, I wonder if it goes to Motorway. Hey! Who are the halfwits who allowed that beautiful crop to rot? Reeves and Mortimer! I never knew there was so much love keeping me warm But I know I won't be traveling forever It's cold out, but hold out and do to take this opportunity to show you our personal selection of some of the outfits from this year's spring fashion collections. Come on, take a look. <laughs> our first outfit is a green twin set. Here it comes. That lovely. It's lovely with classic white blouse and red court shoes. Ideal for a Sunday day trip, for instance, to stare at the rolling stock at York Station. Yeah, <laughs> and next, Thanks, Maxine is wearing a classic lemon cashmere cardigan with a tartan miniskirt, long socks and shoes. <laughs> Ideal for taking a long... <laughs> 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 oh, be on. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Barbara is wearing a thick black woolen trench coat with white boots and white accessories. Oh, oh God! Ideal, perhaps for a forthcoming marriage oh my to God, a night God. soilsman or perhaps Mascus. a play. God, what have they been eating? <laughs> and that's what the ladies will be wearing this spring. Once again, Mulligan and O'Hare have got it spot on. Their new album, Titty Biscuits, a collection celebrating the joys of the countryside. I've 
The passionately and awe-inspiring tone, <laughs> House Fire. House on fire! Look to the house! Tennis house! Where the boats? <laughs> Synth cop! Hot tarts on fire! House nuts! Nuts on the house on fire! Dustbuster! Mulligan and O'Hare's instrumental version of Brimful of Asher by Corner Shop. And their inflammatory version of the Tantras, what are you going to do with a chimney on you? Tea Biscuits, the new album by Mulligan and O'Hare. I have in my hand a contract. Who's it for, Paul? Securing Last week the on the club. Services. For one night only, Les Dennis. You're joking. No, it's true, Les Dennis. It's a very good joke. I think that we should give Kinky John the night off as compare and let Les Dennis do the whole lot. Not yours, Kinky John. He would be very upset, Paul. <laughs> Kinky John has had the bad news from Tony and has gone to confront Paul. Paul! Are you in here? Paul oh, Baron, I know you are in here! Oh! Hello, John, is that you? What can I do for you? Tony tells me that my services are not required to my port. What, me do that to you, John? How preposterous. No, nothing to do with me. It was, um... Les Dennis! There's a big problem for me, though. You will have to sort out. I will have to put... Tony and Julie wait anxiously for Mr Dennis to arrive. Where have they come smart or casual? What is that with your own Les Dennis? Look, everyone! It's Les Dennis! Come and meet him. Don't be shy. Come on. This is my brother, Tony, my brother-in-arms. He spent 30 years in Hong Kong. Oh, right. Do you know Mika Hakkinen? No, Mr. Hacken, I'm not from Hong Kong, Les. That's an easy mistake to make. Yeah. All right, then. And this is Julie. Good gorgeous, Les. Right, all right, then, my hostess, hostess. <laughs> Julie, can, Julie, can I come, come over here? Let me have a word with you. I'll leave it in the hands of Tony for a moment, Les, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll solve I said. <laughs> No, but just Did you do his dressing room? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, I did it really, really nice. Right. Yeah, you, you will tell him it was me, won't you, Mr. Murray? Of course I will. <laughs> what, what are in your suit bag, lads? Um, my suit. <laughs> Give me a bottle of Jack. Yeah? There you go. Some of the matter, you look a bit upset, Jan. Uh, I am in a position of great distress. Caught to me by this jerk off Les Dennis, who has usurped me on my own territory. What are you going to do about it then, John? <laughs> I am going to get shit faced. So, you're not going to show tonight then? I have been usurped on my own territory. Did I tell you about the time I was usurped in Japan when I was driving trains for the king of. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I have not heard that story. No, no are one. Sure? Are you all right, John? I'm not feeling myself. Well, you know, have a drink, you might feel a bit better. Carl, I am not an insect, I am a human. I know you're not one of your best friends, is that? Go on, cheer yourself up, give one of your songs. Oh, you better stop. Ho, 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 ho. You better stop. Ho, 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 ho. Kinky John's in the club, right? He's got a gun. He's very drunk. He says he's going to get Les Dennis, right? I'm going to go and see if I can sort it out. All right, all right. Thanks very much, Carl. Right, here we go. What's going on? Kinky John needs to come out of the club usually. Who? Kinky John. Kinky John? What kind of club is this? He runs a club usually in the evenings, and I think he's a bit mad. Well, look, as long as I get my money, I don't mind. I don't care. Sorry, do you mind mind calling you Les? Hello. Hello. I just came to check that everything's all right with you. Yeah, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Liking the room, if the garnish is to your satisfactory liking. It's really nice, yeah. Did did Paul tell you that I I did it all for you? I thought he'd done it. No, did he tell you that? No, I got a puppy, Les. They're lovely, yeah. Soft and wet, very rigid, Les. What do you want a notebook, Rogers? All oh, right, this. Behave yourself. What I want you to do is stack these uh, cider bottles up on the top shelf. Oh, no. Yeah? You do that for us, then. Yeah? What have you been doing, anyway? I've been on the fort now, oh, my fat mother. All right. She's talking... coming tonight to see Les Dennis. Oh, yeah, she likes him, does she? Yeah? Yeah? She's oh, coming down, she says she's going to sleep with him. What? She's <laughs> going to sleep with him. She's going to have sex with Les Dennis? Yeah? Well, she's fat, your man. She might let you might not want to have sex with her. She said she don't care. She's just gonna. She just wants it. All right. <laughs> you know, you better keep an eye on it, though. You're looking after less tonight, you know. Don't have to tell me. I don't want right. any trouble from your fat mum. Right? You know. I'm, I'm a married no, let man. Me, let me, let me, let me. I'm a married man. I love you, Les. I do love you, Les. I'm a married man. Yes, what's she got? I've got less. Well, she's my wife. She's got a wedding ring that I've given her. You have what I've got, then you tell me if she hasn't got that. Look, you know, I couldn't. I'm not that kind of bloke. I'm not that kind of bloke. She's ready to have sex with you. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I don't have sex can. with anybody. It's all right, Mr. Dennis. It's oh. coming, mate. It's coming, all right. Come on, let's come and come on. That's it. I'm not going anywhere with you. No. 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 Oh, Jesus. All right, where's everything? You've been looked after, all right? I just want to go home. Please, Paul, let me go home now, please. Calm down, Liz. What a luxury chocolate, hell? I don't want a chocolate. Do, do, do I right, detect right. a spot of stage fright? Ah, what the hell are you doing? Right. 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 Paul, my friend, Kinky Jaw has just shot Chris's fat mother in my state of relief. I have done it. I am a gas. <laughs> <laughs> so, poor Baron, this is where the sheep are grazing, eh? Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> and you guys, get out of my face! 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you're probably aware, it's 50 years since they introduced the silence laws in public libraries. That's, That's right, right, isn't it? Yes, it is. And if you're over 50 years, then you will remember that uh, before the silence laws, it was mayhem in public libraries. That's right. <laughs> oh, come and look at my pictures, they're dead clear. Yeah. Where, where's the Western fiction section, you slag? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a fight on in reference, yeah. eh? You are overdue. I said you, you are overdue. You are overdue. I said you are overdue. That was the libraries before the silence laws, but now, of course, they're a place of calm, tranquility and... Uh, peace. Peace! Exactly, <laughs> to celebrate that fact. We've written a little symphony. It's a quiet symphony. That's right, right yes, and we've uh, selected all the soft objects that we could find around the world. To That's use. right, not the obvious ones, not the obvious ones, you know, like a cotton wool or pipe lagging or yeah. caniston cream. Sure, yeah. Not the obvious ones. <laughs> <laughs> or maiden hair or muff dust. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> none of that, none of that. Not the obvious ones. Well, you'll find out what we've used. Just watch as we go along. It's quite a symphony. Ladies and gentlemen, la symphony pathetique silence quietly, quietly, bibliotheque uh, Mickey Rooney's early morning eggs. Talcum powder. Look, 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 look. Glug, 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 glug. Oil on glug, cardigan. Glug, 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 glug. Shh, quiet, please, quiet, please, quiet. <laughs> Pressure on rabbits. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Boiled egg in bowl. Conditioner in our gun song. Petrol bomb. on cheek. but I'd be much more aware of the pitfalls, such as drinking vermouth. And join me here today on the skip pad by my good friend, singer-songwriter, Paul Simon. Bring by. Bring by. of people on the roads today use only 10% of their minds. 15% of the 10% is concentrating on sex, 50% on violence, and a further 98% on where the next drink's coming from. That's incredible. But, Paul, who's this crazy guy behind you? Who's this guy? Well, you'd think you'd have one martini too many, wouldn't you? But, Neil, this guy's an expert. Yeah, and you know, it seems to me that everybody thinks they're an expert on the roads these days. That's right, Neil. For instance, take a look at this clown here using a mobile phone on the highway. Yeah, good morning, Sonny. Seven. Yeah, Jim Blossom, Sonny. <laughs> now, just look at this footage coming up now. It's incredible and, interestingly, doesn't actually involve a vehicle. <laughs> Police came across this man pushing a wheelbarrow full of potatoes. Just keep your eyes on the speed in the right-hand corner of the screen. 
Yes, male Caucasian, uh, mid 50s, pushing what appears to be potatoes. That's 60 miles an hour with a wheelbarrow. Shit, he's had some fire. 80 miles an hour. He's eating the whole area up. These potatoes are making the whole area. Potatoes overheated, causing a bit of volatility, you know. But it's basically just a road traffic matter. 80 quid fine, something like that. I'll be back next week with me hot parsnips. <laughs> that's it, from police camera accident. Hold on a minute, Paul. Mr Hex, the road and safety woodpecker, has something to say. My balls are gonna blow! <laughs> Thank you very much, thank no, you. It's not nice of you to come and join us, but yeah. it's always nice to start off the proceedings, isn't it, with a little explosion. A little explosion for Mr Winner. Right, here we go, <laughs> then. in front of your mantelpiece. Oh. <laughs> Is it true that despite the passion, you can't keep your eyes off your Dalmatian bookends? Who <laughs> <laughs> told you about that? I told you. I've been looking into this. He's been he, reading Hello. I've been spying. You've been spying. You know. Mr Winner, do you like foreign food like sun-boiled onions in fettered cheese? <laughs> Winner. It's not regularly on my diet, sunball onions in feta cheese. <laughs> but, uh, What's that? It sounds resistible. Yes, right. Right. By David Stott. Well, Michael. McVitie's yogurts. <laughs> the last name in yogurt? McVitie's <laughs> yogurt. I think you're quite right. I agree with you on that <laughs> one. <laughs> what is the most savoury dish in the world? But you can't have oxo, bovril, or pies. <laughs> Favourite dish, but you can't have oxo No, oh, savoury dish, Mr. Oh, Winner. <laughs> this ain't over here, yes. <laughs> most savoury dish. The most savoury dish, Yeah, but yes. you can't have pies or bubbly or oh, oxo. Sausage rolls. Right. Oh, right. right. Oh, Mr. Winner, they a good question, this one from David. Right. Would you give five raps on your drum? To five introduce... raps on the drum, yeah, right. Yeah, introduce a question. Right. question. Right. How long have you been doing this, fellas? Well, mm. uh, well... Two minutes now. Who am I really building up nice for ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Come on, David! David, pull yourself together! on a parsnip. <laughs> Fingerprints on a parsnip. Yeah. Is it possible? Very possible. Oh, right. <laughs> That's a good question. Oh. Same question from me, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> if you dig it, I'm just looking 
censor for Mr. No, you're being excluded. Mr. Winner doesn't want to see that. Mr. Winner, if you ever forgot how old you were, would you cut off your leg and count the rings? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Winner. I'm not sure you could get all the rings on my leg. Yeah. Well, do you still wear nappies at night? <laughs> do you do it? That's not a fair question, Mr. Winner. He's a film director. What? Are you finished now? Yeah? All right then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Mr. Winner. We've hey, got hey, we hey, had hey. Mr. Winner on the show. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's relatively late in the day. It's 9 a.m. Is it gyro day, Tom? No, Derek, it's not gyro day. As you so <laughs> eloquently put it in your voice, as rich as Christmas pudding. Shame. No, it's 9 a.m. and we've been awake now for five hours, having been thrown out of our lodgings due to Derek's rather unconventional way of eating an Arctic roll in the supper room last night. <laughs> what were you doing, Derek? I was trying to replicate the way that the pelican might eat the Arctic roll. I understand <laughs> entirely now. Well, yes, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. We've got our trolley with our cakes and our snouts in cakes it. Cakes and snouts. Lovely. Hmm. So what's the first stop then, John? The first stop today, John, <laughs> is right here. It's the display of the miniature wind-up winning frogman. He's fantastic. He's amazing. Isn't he? I like him. I'd like to take him home and cuddle him when I have a bath. Well, I'll tell you what, Derek, why don't we borrow this one and we'll take him down to the sea and watch him swimming in the sea. It should be fun, shouldn't it? I'd like that, yes. <laughs> Come back, frogman. I'm sorry. I only wanted a cuddle. <laughs> Seeing Derek there, up to his waist in tidal waters, it's with tears literally streaming down my uh, cheeks and my heart a flutter with emotion that I remember the first time I met him 20 years ago at Wembley when he was the drummer in Roxy Music. I want a tomato, Tom. Come on, man. <laughs> Surprise. 